I can't believe it, but it says it's 97% humidity right now on the Weather Channel app. Hopefully that gets better over the day. I think it's supposed to go down pretty significantly. Um, looks like to around, maybe down to even 40%, which would be amazing. That'd be probably the best in a long time. So we'll wait for this afternoon and then we will hopefully jump into our track session, which is uh, six by 800 meters today. Um, I also have had like a little bit of pain the last couple of days, um, just with like my plantar, like almost like plantar fasciitis. So hopefully that's not too much of an issue and it doesn't hurt today because if it is hurting, um, then honestly, I'll also want to kind of not do a, an all out track session and aggravate it anymore. I want it to heal rather than, uh, get any worse. So we'll see how that goes. I'll see how it feels throughout the day and do a couple little stretches and things for my foot to see if it gets any better. Uh, I'm not sure what caused it or what shoe it was, but we'll see. So we'll keep you posted and hopefully we can get outside a little bit later this afternoon. So what we have here is the Hoka Rincon 3, uh, the lightweight trainer. And it is, uh, so far, just taking out of the box, a really nice looking shoe. Um, I love the comfort of it just kind of slipping on my foot. It's not a super stout or, or stiff um, heel counter here, but still very plush feeling, um, especially for how light it is. You can see it has a lot of midsole foam. Um, so we'll talk about that in just a second, but it's a very plush shoe, uh, very comfortable underfoot um, while still maintaining a very, you know, lightweight um, overall build. So we'll dive into that first. Uh, it's only 7.4 ounces or I believe 210 grams, and that's in a men's size 9, um, which is amazing. I mean, 7.4 ounces uh, is a very light shoe, especially for how much cushion there is under here. Um, and I've actually seen two in a men's size 11. It's only goes up to 233 grams, which is 8.2 ounces. Uh, again, that's a men's size 11. So that's a great, great weight for the shoe. Um, now this is a very basic EVA midsole foam. Um, so it will probably break down quicker over time, which this shoe is notorious for not having the longest lifespan. You can see here already that some of this foam is starting to get some creases in it. Um, if you look really closely, this is just for me slipping it on my foot and walking around a little bit yesterday. Um, you know, I've been trying to kind of heal my foot a little bit from the plantar fasciitis pain. So I was trying to wear these indoors just to have some cushioning under my foot. And I think some of these creasing, some of this creasing you can see is actually built into the shoe, obviously these lines here. Um, but there was definitely some, some unnatural creasing just from me wearing it day to day uh, already in this midsole here. And, you know, that's part of 
you know, why this older EVA is kind of going away. It tends to break down and compress quicker over time. Um, so that may definitely impact the lifespan of the shoe as a whole. Again, just going back to how much of this midsole foam you're going to get underfoot, you are going to get 29 millimeters in the heel and 24 millimeters in the forefoot for a five millimeter drop. Um, and just again, I mean, this shoe, you can feel it in your hands. It feels super light. Um, it's pretty close to the weight of something, I guess, like the Saucony Endorphin Pro. Um, you know, certainly heavier than the Nike Vaporfly line, but it feels like that, you know, in your hands when you pick it up feels very similar to the weight of a lighter racing shoe. So that's really nice in something that could be more of a daily trainer or long run shoe. Um, in my opinion, I think people will probably still race in these. Um, if you want to kind of do running more on a budget, which is fine. Not everybody needs a $250 racing shoe. This could get the job done simply because of the weight alone. Now again, just my first impressions, but as I've been walking around in this shoe, you know, I say it's light enough to be something that you can race in, but keep in mind, again, this is not something that's a, a super resilient or bouncy foam. So yeah, like, you know, I talk about this could be a racing option for somebody, but I don't want to lead anyone in the wrong direction in thinking that this is a foam that's going to give you a lot of energy return. Again, you know, said it a couple times now, but it's just an older EVA foam and really it's just lightweight and that's what I think could make it a racing option. But at the end of the day, there's really not any kind of bounce or anything in this foam. Um, it's just a really nice lightweight feel, cushioned, uh, keeps your legs from getting beat up over a longer race. But again, it's not something that's going to give you a lot of spring. Obviously no carbon fiber plate in here, um, just a soft, comfortable ride. Uh, a lightweight ride overall, I think I'm definitely going to lean towards this being more of a daily trainer uh, and something I'll definitely take out on a longer run just to see how it does for all of you. As far as the price of the shoe, this shoe is $115. Um, so again, I think that's a really great price for the weight of the shoe, for the comfort of the shoe. Again, just overall putting this on, it has a really nice soft feeling to it. It's got this breathability built in with these holes cut out here, um, but overall probably not the most breathable shoe out there, um, but still, you know, plenty of breathability built in. Um, it's got a really thin tongue, which is nice, but at the same time, it's actually got a little bit of this padding and netting and cushioning built in that you're going to feel when you put it on your own foot is more than most um, especially in a lightweight shoe these days you know you really sometimes get a tongue that's just a piece of you know thin material and you can feel every lace all the way up and down your foot this is definitely more than that which is nice but still um, a very comfortable um, form-fitting uh, tongue that will hug your foot very well but give you a little bit of padding if you can see in there it is not a gusseted tongue it is completely loose all the way down um, so you know no issues when i put it on and walked around as far as shifting or moving around but just keep that in mind that it is not a gusseted tongue they did add this little tiny heel tab here um, i think this is a reduction from what they had in the past which was a big band um, i think it's fine overall it'll help you get into the shoe but i could see probably you know ripping this off after some time if you're pulling on this often or pulling hard to get your foot in so just be careful with that but this is the you know what they call their pull tab as far as the laces go they're fine very basic comfortable normal kind of cotton lace um, nothing crazy nothing different nothing out of the ordinary um, it does have the extra hole here for the runner's knot if you like that um, and there is, you know, one spot on the tongue where you can slide the laces through to try and keep the tongue in place since, again, it is not a gusseted tongue. Um, as far as the tongue up here where it hits your, you know, your ankle, it has a design shape that they say is supposed to help hug your ankle uh, up here at the, you know, where your leg meets your foot. Uh, I personally think it is a little short, um, you know, and just sliding it on my foot, it kind of runs right into where your leg is perpendicular to your foot. So in my opinion, if you don't have long enough socks, this will just kind of rub right into your leg. Uh, this part here kind of goes up, so your foot sits in it like a pocket, but it's a little bit short in my opinion. I think it should be longer so it can come up your foot and make sure that this piece is not just driving straight into your leg um, when you're running. 
So overall, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that I have the shoe. Again, I'm really happy with the price of $115. Just kind of been sitting for the moment and my foot has been bothering me. Um, it's been getting better and I'll talk a little bit about, you know, what I'm trying to do to help my foot heal quickly. Uh, again, it is just some kind of plantar fasciitis that I'm dealing with um, since last weekend's long run. Uh, and unfortunately, I haven't been running just to try and have it heal quicker. I don't want to try and push anything so that way in the long term it's still hurting me and I can't get out to race the New York City Marathon. So better to let it heal. And, um, you know, my ultimate goal is to show up to the starting line healthy for New York City. Now, as someone who does have a slightly wide foot, I do tend to size up in the Saucony or Hoka shoes. Um, I can get away with a 12 and a half for a Nike Vaporfly next percent and 4%. But for my Saucony Endorphin Speed, and now for this shoe, I do have a men's 13. So just to give you a sense of what size I'm working with. And I do consider that I have a slightly wider foot, but for me, a men's 13 is perfect. There's no issues with any kind of tightness on the sides. Um, it fits great here. Um, my toe comes up right about there, which for me is you know perfectly normal and how I like to wear my shoes. Now, if you can see what I was talking about with the tongue here, it does come up just barely um, to where my you know leg comes down and meets my ankle and my foot. And I just feel like this particular part right here, if I wasn't wearing socks that came up high enough, would probably give me a pretty good blister um, and rub right into my foot because it's, you know, the tongue is coming this way and my foot is this way. And if I'm running, it's a little bit stiff right here. So it definitely caused some, some pain and rubbing if I was going for a long run with this shoe. Um, so I would definitely wear long enough socks just to make sure that portion is covered. I'm not sure why they designed it to be that short. But they do say, again, this tongue is designed to help hug your foot, which I do feel uh, it does shape right around my, my ankle nicely. But I just wish they thought about how this may rub your foot the wrong way. So the last thing I want to show you is the outsole. And I just forgot to mention it before. You can see there's plenty of rubber up by the forefoot um, where some people may land on the ground, but more likely where you're going to be pushing off and then towing off through your stride. But as you come down, you'll see most of the heel is just a, what they call, I think like a rubberized or like a, an extra durable set of EVA foam pods, I guess, that are put on the bottom of the shoe there. You can kind of see how there's pod shapes versus just the foam that would be in the midsole. Um, you know, obviously you have some strategically placed rubber on the heel where they anticipate people landing before they roll through their stride. But the fact of the matter is, I think people are still going to land and rub a lot of this foam away, um, kind of on the medial or inside portion of this shoe. If you land really in your midfoot, or if you just don't land on your outside of your heel, this whole portion of foam, I think that's exposed is part of what's going to break down pretty quickly, unfortunately. Um, and like I said, also, I just think that the midsole foam overall, as I start to run myself being a heavier weight, but really for anybody is just going to compress uh, more quickly because it is an older, more classic EVA foam that a lot of shoes have moved past. There's a lot of new technology and foam out there, and this shoe just doesn't have it necessarily for the foam material itself. Um, but I think where this shoe still shines is just the fact that it is so light um, it is so cushioned and comfortable, um, and they really found out how to do that very well, even though, you know, again, it's an older foam as far as the technology goes. So obviously, you know, things haven't been going as planned with um, some of the pain that I'm still feeling in my foot. I mentioned it after the weekend that, you know, it's just something that I didn't want to push. I wasn't going to go out for my track workout that day. If I was starting to feel pain, um, I didn't want to aggravate it. I still don't want to aggravate it. And, and that's why, honestly, even up to today on Thursday, um, I haven't gone out for a run. So it's unfortunate. It's definitely a hitch in the training plan. But um, kind of like the other week where I forgot running shoes when I went home to visit my parents, um, you know, it comes at an OK time. Today, this week wasn't a week that was going to be an escalation of the mileage overall. It was going to be kind of a, a workout and mild taper week into a, you know, half marathon um, kind of a test or preparation race. Um, so obviously I wish, you know, this weekend my foot would kind of heal up so I can go for a faster pace 13.1 mile run. 
Um, but we'll see how it goes. Again, I'm not going to push it because this year I want to get out there and run the New York City Marathon course, be a part of the 50th anniversary of the New York City Marathon, um, even if I can't train at the highest level that I wanted to. Um, you know, running is a long-term sport. I have a lot of goals over the next, you know, 10 years or so. Um, you know, I'll link up, you know, at the top, just a video uh, that I posted recently about kind of where I'm coming from in running and where I want to go with running. So, you know, it's a short-term setback. Uh, there's a lot more to come. So overall, just want to make sure I'm healthy before I start running and, and pick up training again for the marathon. Uh, and overall, like I said, you know, I'm not missing a higher mileage week. I'm not missing an increase in my long run distance this week. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm definitely going to continue doing what I'm doing using my foot log, uh, which I have, which just helps massage out the foot. And I use regularly anyway, um, to keep my feet healthy after running, um, foam rolling, just doing some stretches and things, um, for my foot, massaging out my foot with my own, you know, with my hands, you kind of push up on the foot and also separate with your thumbs. It's supposed to help out. Um, and it has in the past, like I've had some plantar fasciitis that just pops up, you know, infrequently, maybe even more so if I'm wearing like a pair of dress shoes all day. Um, and I just need to like massage out my foot and then it generally goes away by the next day. So this is the longest time I felt like a consistent pain from that in my foot, but, um, I'm hopeful it'll, it'll get better soon enough. So I'll keep an eye on that. Keep you posted. Um, but for now, yeah, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of the new Rincon 3 that came in for me. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to get out there in a video soon and start, uh, start running in them.